Hello and welcome to Decoding the New Economy. Today I'm joined by Suresh Vasudeva, the CEO of Nimble Storage. So Suresh, let's kick off with um, what Nimble Storage do. Yes, well, we are a data storage company. Um, we were founded about six years ago and many of the early team at Nimble came from the storage industry. Right. And fundamentally, we were uh, founded on the premise that the world of data storage was going to change radically because of one core disruption that all of us in the storage industry are facing, right? It's the arrival of flash as a medium that now needs to be accounted for in how you design storage for large enterprises. Yeah, now that's been a big change going from mechanical drives to solid state uh, flash drives. Um, how big a change have you seen that thing? You know, I think if I look back at the uh, last 15 years of innovation in our industry, mm -hmm. there have been lots of different innovations by many companies in our industry. I would argue that there is no disruption as significant as the arrival of solid state storage right. and its impact on how you design and build storage systems. Now, I'll also go so far as to say, while it's extremely disruptive, it's also complementary mm -hmm. to traditional electromechanical disk drives. And so, so the real trick is in understanding how you leverage this disruption in rethinking the overall storage system. Yeah, now there's been a price differential, um, quite, a, quite a price differential over time. Is that coming closer between those electromechanical drives and uh, solid state? Indeed, I think there was a very, uh, the way I would characterize it is if you look at the early 2000s, the uh, price of flash was almost unaffordable. Yes. But as consumer devices started to use solid state storage and solid flash drives, the price of flash started coming down to a point where it makes sense to think about using flash in storage systems. Mm. Having said that, the flash is still about 15 times more expensive right. than disk drives, traditional disk drives. And so it's still not practical to think about flash as the answer to all storage problems. Mm. Flash is extremely high performance but extremely expensive. So the, so a judicious blend of both flash and disk drives is, is the right answer for the foreseeable future for some time now. Right. How do you see different companies using the uh, flash versus the mechanical? Yeah, so I think the uh, I'll start off by saying for almost any customer, any enterprise customer, if they've been deploying storage from traditional companies like EMC, like NetApp, like Dell, mm -hmm. using disk drives as the fundamental building block, then using flash in their storage architectures is going to radically simplify and lower the cost of deploying storage for almost yeah. any customer. Now there are two or three very broad ways of using flash. One is to use flash drives on the server itself, and there's a certain class of applications, very high performance computing applications in some enterprises that could benefit from that approach. So it's more of a niche approach. Yeah. A second approach is to make up a storage system entirely made of just flash drives. Again, if you look at any large enterprise, there's a small sliver of applications where you have such high performance requirements that using a storage system made up of just flash drives might indeed make sense. Mm. The majority of what you think of as mainstream enterprise applications are ones where while performance is very important, cost of capacity is also important, things like data protection are also important. And so that's really where you see what are often called hybrid systems. So storage systems that use a combination of flash to accelerate performance mm. and disks to lower the cost of capacity. That's probably the most prevalent way of deploying flash that most customers uh, that most customers deploy today. Mm. So with the life cycle of uh, those solid state drives, um, that have been in the, in the market that for over a decade. How do you see the life of them compared to the electromagnetic types? Yeah, no, you raise a really good point. Indeed, one of the um, so there are when people think about the future of flash drives, there are two questions that always come up. Over time, will the, pla will the price of flash drives come down to a point where it becomes practical to just use flash drives? Mm. The uh, second question is that flash has a property that the more you write to it, the more it tends to wear out and it has a limited endurance, if you will, a limited life. Yeah. And I think the defining question around how prevalent will flash be for most applications revolves around its endurance. Today I would say there's a certain class of flash drives that are about 15 times more expensive than disk drives yep. that have enough endurance that you can deploy mainstream enterprise applications mm -hmm. on those flash drives. Yeah. If you want to go down the cost curve and use more commodity flash, if you will, which has uh, prices that are maybe five or six times that of disk drives, yep. the trade-off you encounter is that they have a lot more limited endurance, okay. appropriate perhaps for laptop use cases, but mm -hmm. inappropriate for mainstream applications in large enterprises. 
devices. Right. And so that's the, that is the defining question. There's a certain class of drives that's appropriate, but it's still fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's where you make the trade-off between how much do I want to use for performance and complement that with disk drives for capacity. Yeah. Now, we've seen storage explode in the last um, decade. Indeed. How do you see all of that going? You know, I think um, I fundamentally believe that the pace of data accumulation, whether it's by enterprises or by consumers, mm -hmm. If anything is accelerating, it is not abated and it won't abate. If anything, yeah. video, images, and so on are only causing the explosion of data to even sort of become a larger problem for from a storage perspective, from a mm. protection perspective. And that I don't see changing at all. Yeah. What is interesting is that when you think about where we store that data and what options we now have, there's an entire class of data that I describe as eventually consistent data. So let me explain what that means. If I'm a consumer that's taken a photograph that I want to upload onto Shutterfly or onto Facebook, I don't really care to get back a response within a few milliseconds saying that Facebook has my photograph. Right. If I'm making an update on LinkedIn, it's okay for that update to show up a second later or 10 seconds later or a sure. minute later. So that's a class of data where performance is not that critical. It needs to yeah. always be around. And that's really where we see over time most of that data being stored in public clouds mm. and in a class of storage systems that's dramatically lower in cost, less responsive, but adequate for the needs of that kind of data. Yeah. And the other extreme are applications that enterprises rely on, databases where they're storing transactions, for example, where what you're really solving for is absolute responsiveness, availability, so attributes that are hard to solve for without sort of engineering a storage system, if you will. Yeah. Mm. That, that um, raises a thing with um, the Internet of Things and machine to machine, where Indeed. you may have industrial applications looking for fast response time. Yes. So do you see applications? So no, it, that's a re really, uh, really interesting observation. So one of the innovations that Nimble Storage came out with, um, in addition to building a storage system made up of flash drives, what makes us really appealing to our customers is that every one of our storage systems around the globe, every few minutes is sending us health information, heartbeats with health information. Right. So on a daily basis, every system is sending us between 10 and 70 million pieces of data. Okay. So across our thousands of systems, we're getting hundreds of billions of sensor inputs. Classic use case of machine generated data exactly. that needs to be analyzed and then lots of actions are taken based on the results of that analysis. Mm -hmm. So that for us is an extremely large NoSQL database that has very demanding performance requirements, yeah. very demanding in terms of the amount of capacity being consumed, and we of course store all of that on number of storage systems, Right. But that's an example of rapidly growing amount of data mm -hmm. as well as extremely demanding from a performance standpoint. Machine data is one of the biggest classes of new Internet of Things. Machine generated data is one of the new yeah. classes of data that's pushing the boundaries on how much data is going to have to be analyzed by most organizations. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice though, to the um, for business owners, CIOs, IT managers who are dealing with this massive wave of data? You know, I think for, for about 15 years, the pace of data growth has been very climbing and very, very sort of steady in terms of there's, a, there's an exponential growth every year that we've encountered. Mm -hmm. What was never an option, so the state of storage has not fundamentally transformed in a major way in the last 10, 15 years. And then over the last five years, I would argue there are two disruptions, each of which is more significant than anything we've seen before. Mm -hmm. One is the arrival of flash as a medium. And the second one is the availability of cloud as an alternate location where you can store your data, right? And so for almost every IT manager, for every CIO, stepping back and analyzing the kind of applications they're deploying, the kind of data they're accumulating, mm -hmm. and understanding whether they'd benefit from leveraging flash optimized architectures yeah. to lower the cost of storage as well as deliver better performance is one, one must do, I would argue, that would allow them to sort of simplify their storage infrastructure. Yeah. The second thing I would say is looking at their applications and understanding what can be deployed in the cloud, what part of their data infrastructure should live in the cloud versus on-premise mm -hmm. is a second uh, must do again in order to make sure they're managing the cost of IT down and simplifying their infrastructure. Right. Now where do you see hard drive storage going next? I, I do think for the next five to ten years, for bulk capacity storage, hard drives are going to be the mainstay of our industry. It's hard for me to imagine the cost of flash coming down to a point where bulk capacity storage moves away from hard drives. Right. Now, I think 
there's a very, very uh, big transition in the amount of flash and the amount of disk drives that, that any customer will deploy. And managing that transition will depend on the relative economics of flash and disk, the relative characteristics of flash and disk from an endurance standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we premised our entire business on is that at any point in time, both flash and disk are complementary. Yep. Today you may want a little bit of flash and a lot of disk. Over time you may want a lot of flash and a little less disk. Mm. We've designed our software architecture to be almost impervious to the relative evolution of flash and disk. Okay. So we can take advantage of mo both media as they evolve. And I fundamentally believe that's what will happen. It's hard to predict exactly what the crossover point will be and when it will be. Mm. What is clear is that flash will get used a whole lot more. Yeah. And disk drives won't go away for the next five, several years, five to ten years or so. So where do you hope to see Nimble in the next five years? You know, one of the things I'm really proud of, and people have looked at Nimble Storage and benchmarked us to every other storage company, um, I'm proud of the fact that we've been called out as the fastest growing storage company. Yeah. We've accumulated customers at a rapid pace. We are now, there are two or three objectives that we are laser focused on. The first one is continuing to broaden our technology platform. We already have a very strong base of differentiation we've brought to bear. So broadening our technology platform is one major goal. Yeah. The second one, a lot of our growth in the first three or so years of the company's existence has come from the US and Canada as our core markets. Over the last year, international markets have contributed more and more revenue, and so right. we see more of our resources and more of our growth going into international markets. So globalization and growing our international sort of uh, customer base is a second major priority. Okay, well thank you very much for joining Decoding the New Economy, Suresh. Thank you, it's a pleasure being here. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. And thank you for joining Decoding the New Economy. Yeah. <laughs>